Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by a dominant and a recessive allele. You should then be able to describe what's meant by an organism's phenotype and genotype. Ok, in the last video we saw that characteristics can be caused by your genetics, your environment or a combination of both. In this video we're going to start looking at the role of genetics in determining characteristics. Remember that human cells have 23 pairs of chromosomes. The only exceptions are gametes, which have 23 unpaired chromosomes, and red blood cells, which do not have any chromosomes. I'm showing you here the nucleus of a cell, which is in interphase. In other words, the cell is in between cell divisions. The dark material in the nucleus is the DNA bound to histone proteins. Scientists refer to this as chromatin. As you can see, during interphase, the chromosomes are not clearly visible within the nucleus. Now, during cell division, the chromosomes condense and become visible in the cell. This diagram shows all the human chromosomes arranged in order. To produce this diagram, scientists photograph the chromosomes. They then arrange the chromosomes in order. Remember that a chromosome consists of a molecule of DNA wrapped around histone proteins. I'm showing you here the chromosome 16 pair and you will see why I've chosen chromosome 16 in a minute. Now as we said before, human cells have 23 pairs of chromosomes. One chromosome in each pair comes from your father. This is called the paternal chromosome. The other chromosome in each pair comes from your mother and this is called the maternal chromosome. The two chromosomes in the pair are called homologous chromosomes. Now on each chromosome we find genes and remember that genes determine your genetic characteristics. Chromosome 16 contains around 800 genes and one of these genes determines whether you have wet earwax or dry earwax. I'm showing that gene here. The position of a gene on a chromosome is called the locus for that gene. Now students often ask why I use the example of the earwax gene. The reason is that earwax is controlled by a single gene, whereas many genetic features are controlled by several genes. Secondly, the environment does not play any role in earwax. Now a key idea you need to understand is that genes can have slightly different forms or variants. Scientists call these alleles. These variations are due to differences in the nucleotide sequences between the alleles. Some genes have a large number of different alleles. However, the gene for earwax only has two alleles. One allele leads to wet earwax. I'm going to give this allele the symbol capital E. The other allele leads to dry earwax and I'm going to give this allele the symbol lowercase e. Now we inherit one allele for every gene from our father on the paternal chromosome in each pair. And we also inherit one allele for every gene from our mother on the maternal chromosome in each pair. The combination of alleles that a person inherits for any characteristic is called the genotype. So that means that there are three possible genotypes for the earwax gene. A person could inherit the wet earwax allele from both parents. In this case, their genotype for the earwax gene is capital E, capital E. Alternatively, a person could inherit the dry earwax allele from both parents. In this case, their genotype for the earwax gene is lowercase e, lowercase e. And finally, a person could inherit an allele for wet earwax from one parent and an allele for dry earwax from the other parent. And in this case, their genotype for the earwax gene is capital E, lowercase e. And I should just point out that it does not matter which parent either allele was inherited from. Ok, now the observable characteristic of an organism is called the phenotype. So in the case of earwax there are two possible phenotypes. These are wet earwax and dry earwax. But how do we determine the phenotype from the genotype? Well, in the case of the first two genotypes, this is straightforward. The genotype capital E, capital E, only has the allele for wet earwax. 
so in this case, the phenotype has to be wet earwax. The genotype lowercase e lowercase e only has the allele for dry earwax. So in this case, the phenotype has to be dry earwax. Looking at the final genotype, we have capital E lowercase e. In this case, the phenotype is wet earwax. That's because the allele for wet earwax is dominant. A dominant allele will always be expressed in the phenotype, even if there's only one copy of the dominant allele. So in the genotype capital E lowercase e, we have the dominant allele for wet earwax. So in this case, the phenotype is wet earwax. Now the allele for dry earwax is recessive. A recessive allele is only expressed in the phenotype if there are two copies of the recessive allele. And we can see that with the genotype lowercase e, lowercase e. In the case of this genotype, we produce the phenotype dry earwax. Now, if we have two copies of the same allele, then we call this homozygous. So the genotype capital E, capital E is homozygous dominant. And the genotype lowercase e, lowercase e is homozygous recessive. Now, in the genotype capital E, lowercase e, we have two different alleles, and scientists say that this is heterozygous. Now, a key idea you need to understand is that if an organism shows the dominant phenotype, then we cannot determine their genotype from their appearance. We can see this with the phenotype wet earwax. A person with wet earwax can have the genotype capital E, capital E, or the genotype capital E, lowercase e. So if a person has the wet earwax phenotype, then we cannot determine their genotype just from their appearance. Okay, I just want to end on one final point. As we said, the phenotype is the observable characteristic of an organism. However, bear in mind that in many characteristics, the environment as well as genetics can play a role. Okay, in the next video, we look at monogenic inheritance.